What's up, Bench Warmers? We have a new Fantasy Bench Warmers series, a weekly podcast series that we're going to put out for you guys where we try to give you the best tips and maybe even the worst tricks to try to sabotage your teams. Uh, I'm joined tonight by Eric and Marco from the bench. Uh, I'm making a nice little appearance, taking over this fantasy a bit. And we want to make sure that you guys join the Bench Warmers Fantasy League. And the code for that is 9ZZ. 18y so 9zz18y if you haven't joined make sure that you do uh, the fantasy season has just started it's only been two game weeks if you have a team you'll come in with any of the points that you've accrued so you don't have to worry about uh, other teams having a head start you'll just slide in right into the place uh, that you fit with the points that being said though we want to do a very quick reminder for where you can listen to us and that's on apple podcast google podcast spotify by searching bench warmers fc so what's up, guys? How are your fantasy teams going so far? Don't ask. It's amazing. <laughs> well, it's not as good as you because, I mean, well, yeah. or, he you cheated know, his way to the first place. I just, I, right. I'm just going to put that out there. I'm not too far behind you. I'm, no, it's a I'm, small 30 points. You know. I, I think I'm closer to the toilet trophy than to the actual trophy. Oh, I had the trophy. Do you want to see him real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring him, bring him, bring him. Yeah, yeah. right, right, at least right, the right. trophy. At least the toilet trophy. I'll bring him out. All right, bring him out. <laughs> i'm actually i'm actually oh, closer to that trophy. one which is sad i'm so but, i'm so depressed well eric gets the toilet trophy we do want to remind everyone that for our bench warmers fc fantasy league the winner the one manager the one man who brings their team to glory at the end of fantasy season come may gets a special prize for much bench warmers uh last season we had a manager nick who had guided his team to a first place finish a very comfortable first place finish and he was able to get a nice new set of threads the liverpool away kit for this season so that was pretty sweet so another reminder and incentive if you guys want to participate with us play with us challenge us see which one of the bench warmers that you can beat make sure that you join our bench warmers fc fantasy league and like we said the winner is going to get a nice like we said the winner is going to get a nice little prize at the end uh what's up eric did you find the uh you find I did, coach? I did. I was asking you guys, should, should I should we show it right now or should we just wait? Or I, I mean, mean up to you guys. You I mean, it up. At the bottom, they they want to work towards something, dude. All right, bet, bet, bet. So this is gonna be the trophy that Mark was working towards right now. That's 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 my goal right there. <laughs> that should have my name. Uh, no, I, wanna, should... I don't know inside or outside. Oh no, yeah, I was thinking we could put it. the name of each loser, like you know, what going if down we, each year. I think I think maybe we can put it on a block. Have you ever seen like the like the Libertadores and stuff? That are yeah, on, like, these yeah, huge freaking yeah. And the plaque of each person. You, yeah. you put a little plaque. Listen, Marco, that might Man. be your target, bro. I think I think I'm close. <laughs> it's only been two weeks, but I think I'm I'm, I'm aiming for that one. <laughs> and this is the one that you that everybody else should be aiming for. <laughs> hey. Oh, there we go. There we go. I think I think we have to add Nico's name to that one. Yeah, probably. He's no, because we have to have the loser of last season to so this one. So this is new. This is new, bro. This is this this new nothing. season, new 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 gifts. All right, new I'm, I'm gifts, cool with it. New gifts, new prizes. It's all good. One thing that Marco did bring up that's very important to, to know, it's only game week two. So if you had a bad start to the season, if there are some transfers that you made that you regret, if there's some players on your team that you didn't want to get, uh, don't worry about raising your hand, Marco. Just keep chugging along. There's a long, long season left and one of the things that i want to remind everybody is it's a marathon it's not a sprint so if we were judging everyone on the game week points that they got each week then that would be a different story but for now we're looking at who has the most points at the at the end of game week 38 so that first uh the first segment that i want to put you guys into something new that we're doing here we want to talk about the bench warmers of the game week so we're looking at players that have played 45 minutes or less because uh, I believe if you guys agree with me, if a manager doesn't have a player in mind, he's going to bench him at least for the first half. That means you're a bench warmer. If you come in on the second half where you get like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 37 minute cameo, that means you weren't really, uh, weren't really considered. So some of the first entries for the bench warmers club, we have Aaron Wambisaka and Greenwood. They both got reduced cameos. Greenwood came on on the second half. Juan Bisaka did not even feature. So that's something that uh, not very good for United. And the one thing I will say is they played god awful. So 
it, hopefully, hopefully, them getting more game time means uh, something positive. I'm still the next on two the entries, both, the next two entries, they're both uh, London London boys. We got Pepe, Pepe who came in late. He had a late sub for Willian. And then Aurier was left on the bench, someone who was actually featuring a lot. And you saw it all on the All or Nothing series. He was all over that team last season. And he was kept on the bench. A few more London boys, actually. We have Tammy Abraham. He had a late feature for Chelsea in their 2-0 loss to Liverpool. And Olivier Giroud has been kind of like the forgotten man. He did get some game time minutes in the EFL Cup this week. But we're talking specifically during the league. So he was left on the bench. And the last name that I, we want to include there to our bench warmers club for fantasy this week is Riyad Mahrez. The only sub that Pep Guardiola made was for Ferran Torres very really late in the 82nd minute um, in their game against Wolves. There is pretty much some oddities about that that we'll get into, some unused subs. But those are the first, uh, what is it, six, seven names in the bench warmers club. And uh, by the end of the season, we're going to see who is the who is the hottest bench warmer, who spent the most minutes right in the bench and who's part of us. So the first thing that I want to get into really quickly is the watch list. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are aware of what the watch list is, Marco and Eric, but just so that you guys can follow me here and everyone else that's listening, the watch list is a custom list that you can add any single player on the fantasy roster into this list, kind of like to bookmark them. Uh, one of the things that I like to do and that's helped me a lot is that you take at least 20, 25 players you sort the game week by the round points. So you look at who scored big that game week. And then anyone that catches your eye that scored high, you, you add them on to your watch list. That way, let's say from game week one to game week two, if there was a player that had two very good scoring game weeks and you see that he's already on your watch list, that's a reminder that, oh, I've been, wa I've been watching this guy and it might be time to bring him in. So one of the first things that I want to go over is city assets. Do you guys have any city players on your teams right now? Boys. I don't. One. I oh, uh, sorry. Are we, are we raising hands? Come on. I, I just. i just. I like to be no, polite. You, just wanted, you know. You just wanted to interrupt you, but <laughs> I just wanted to yeah, be polite. Yeah. He. I'm talking, and he raises his hand, and I'm. I'm talking. Is that interrupting you? Talking. No. <laughs> so I mean, I was going to raise your hand, Marco. Whatever. Mm. Uh, all right. So Eric, right, do you have any city players on your team right now? I do not, but I am thinking of pulling my wild card. And Ooh. getting some in, I'm debating right now. Really hard. Marco, oh, you said you had one city asset. Who you got on your team? I pulled the wall card because I did like I did crap this two past two games a <laughs> uh, week. So I have the brain for now. Nice. Um, nice. I can actually switch it, so I still have time to switch it if I need to. But as of right now, that's the only city player that I consider is somebody good to get. Uh yeah, I agree with that. And actually, a lot of managers will agree with you on that because in their game against Wolves, KDB was just. I think he just reminded everybody that he's literally the best player in the league, especially in terms of fantasy. This guy is on penalties. He's on set pieces. Um, pretty much he's a, a fantasy bonus point magnet because he just plays so well all over the pitch. One thing that might turn people away is his price. So at 11.5, he's recognized as one of those premium midfielders. Uh, there could be other ways to get into the city team. And really the only one that you might look at that's budget is probably Phil Foden. Phil Foden at 6.5 is someone that is cheap, relatively accessible, gets some minutes. But I have a feeling that he's not going to start very much. Right now with Aguero out, uh, which we both know, we all know here, he's probably going to be out for another month or so. We're looking at probably a front line that includes Jesus. So Jesus with Sterling and KDB, just put up different numbers whenever Aguero's on the pitch. Aguero seems to kind of uh, take control of the scoring. But with that spread being a little bit stretched thin between those three guys, I think you're going to be safe if you choose any of the three. So I'm talking about Jesus as a striker, 9.5. KDB as a midfielder, 11.5. Sterling as a midfielder at the same price. KDB, though, no surprise. Like I just said, um, one of the other things that might convince people if you're listening to this and you're on the fence about KDB. Gundogan is sick. As you guys know, he caught COVID. Oh, yeah. So Bernardo Silva hasn't been featuring as much and David Silva is gone. 
So really, the one man that's going to rest on his shoulders to pull that number 10 role is going to be KDB. So if you guys are thinking about bringing someone like that in, I would greatly consider uh, KDB. The next two guys I want to talk about before I ignore Eric, uh, they're Spurs players. So, Eric, if you got something to say about the city guys. No, yeah, just about KDB. Um, for a future reference, if you want to know how long you know he's going to last as far as games go, like – each game, if he's like redder and redder, just know that it's probably time to give him a rest. Because he has to generate just uh, his low heads up. <laughs> yeah, the 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 pink meter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The more pink he gets, the more pink and red he gets. <laughs> That's Fuck the most up. tired that he is. Oh, one of the guys that I do want to talk about really quick, and especially because these are all players that I'm looking to bring in. These are players that are on my watch list, which is why I started with that first. Uh, players that you probably want to start looking at ahead of this game week three deadline Kane and son. So Kane at 10.5, four assists. Uh, an interesting stat about Kane is he only completed seven passes the entire game against Southampton. That's crazy. Forward passes. Yeah. Four of yeah. them were assists. So lucky game, bro. So this might be, this might be. Uh, I mean, yes, we're probably looking at Kane as a premium striker. Yes, he's a great player. But this game against Southampton might be an exception as far as his assists. Last season, in fact, his record tally for assists was two. And he already doubled that in one match. So it just seemed to be one of those days where him and him and some kind of clicked. At 10.5, if you want to invest in him and make him your premium striker, uh, I wouldn't say anything against that. They have some pretty good fixtures coming up. But really the hottest asset right now, um, punishing all of his game week one sellers for not being patient is human son. So I'm going to ask you guys the uncomfortable question. Did you guys, did either of you have son and sell him early? Thankfully not. Marco, why are you quiet? <laughs> because I was one of them, okay? It doesn't feel good. I actually got rid of him for William. <laughs> I was actually very upset because I didn't watch the game and I woke up to the news that he had fucking scored four goals. And that's <laughs> that's, that's exactly me, bro. I am so salty. And for everybody that's listening, he has uh, Eric has that meme of SpongeBob with the who. With the with the who I, like I don't know. How to, I don't know how to explain the it. The only one that could put it into words. I love it. <laughs> the who. <laughs> well, son, uh, son did go down in price. Um, he did. Unfortunately, after all of his game week one sellers, but he punished everybody that put him out. So he very temporarily went down to eight point nine, and now he's back at nine million. For a premium midfielder, son definitely passes the eye test. The only thing that is kind of worrisome is their fixture run you know they have a few difficult fixtures coming up in their next two or three um some top six opposition mixed in there as well they also face the likes of crystal palace you know guaita with crystal palace has been looking great but i won't go too much into that i think kane and son are really the only two players to consider uh from spurs and i'll get into why later on with the players that i've removed from the watch list so some budget guys if you want to look at spending less on your front line. I got three names for you guys. Bamford from Leeds, DCL from Everton. And if you have Mitrovic already from Fulham, those are players that I would stick with now. Bamford at 5.7 has seen two price rises already. Uh, Leeds have been definitely overperforming, but for, for a team that scored already seven goals in their first two games, uh, definitely you wouldn't bet against them getting more goals to move forward. I think Bielsa's team definitely caught the eye of every FPL manager because those guys really want to look out for. They're, they're cheap, they're relatively nailed on, and they can be very reliable to kind of enable the rest of your squad to be more expensive. So they're traditionally known as enablers. So Bamford is one there. DCL, uh, I think DCL is this season's pookie party. If you haven't gotten on DCL, you might regret not being at the DCL disco as some people have been talking about it. So <laughs> the DCL disco is definitely going hard. He's gone up to 7.2 already. He's had two price rises. So I would watch out. That's something I'm going to touch at the end of this segment. I would watch out for uh, the price rises because if you wait too long to make a decision, and you overthink things, uh, you might miss out on getting a player by 0.1 or 0.2 million. That's the most frustrating thing that could happen. 
Uh, some midfielders, just to go along really quickly, some budget midfielders. Really, the midfield is the place that you might want to get someone very cheap. You can do that in the strikers. But I think for this season, getting a good three striker system might help. Uh, I don't want to get too complicated, though. So the names I have are Mope from Brighton. He scored a brace um, against Newcastle. He's also on penalties. That's a big thing that you guys want to want to kind of keep keep in mind. Uh, this season, I think this season is going to be very, very penalty intense. Very penalty intense. I think, I believe it was maybe game week one or two that there was a record 10 penalties given, um, which is like the most in game week or something like that, or at least for like that one match day. But we've seen a lot of dubious penalties given. We've seen a lot of, you know, um, the new handball rule. Like if it touches the hand, there's really no argument. It's going to get called. So you want to look at the players that have penalties uh, on their, I guess, responsibilities list. So mall pay is definitely one to have at 6.5. Antonio, uh, he got his goal versus Arsenal. He's very much fixture proof. Uh, he can he can perform against any team. He, he had a bit of a price drop. He's at 6.5. Four, but Antonio from West Ham is someone that uh, we saw him go off at the end of last season. It looks like he's going to be able to continue that form now, uh, notching his goal this past week. Uh, two more cheap, uh, I guess, uh, options. Two more cheap options. Pereira from West Brom. Uh, Pereira at 6.5. He scored a great goal, but you really want to sit back and think, do I really want a West Brom player on my team? Again, these budget midfielders are people that you want to be cheap but to get as close to a full 90 minutes as you want as you can get because if they don't there's really no point in having them unless they're like really really cheap like 4.5 or or a 4 million which is usually defenders those guys are the ones that are worth having but Pereira 6.5 if you want to have someone from a different team so you don't triple up or double up uh, on a certain uh, club. I think that's a good option. And then there's Angisa, 4.5 Angisa from Fulham. He played a full 90 minutes, like I was saying. He's he lo- he's looked good. He's grabbed an assist this last week. Um, Bisuma was someone else from Brighton, but you guys saw that karate kick to the person's face that kind of got him red carded for the next three weeks. So he's not coming in until October 17th. Um, some of the defenders that I will say now, the defenders to bring in, I have Castang. Saiz and Reese James. So Castang from Leicester, he's looking pretty good. He already has his goal. He has an assist. It's the first two game weeks, which of course we don't want to read into too much, but uh, Leicester have been looking kind of shaky in the back, but Castang, as far as the attacking returns, looks like probably like a budget Trent Alexander, someone that gets up forward. Maybe will not score as much as Trent, but if you're tight for funds, Castang is someone looking uh, looking pretty tasty. Saiz from Wolves. Wolves have, you know, that solid defense. Saiz is always involved. He got his goal the first game week, um, which, you know, got him off the mark pretty good. 5.1, he's already gone up in price, but he's definitely someone to consider, especially considering that Wolves' next five games are against lower half opposition. That's something that I want to touch on moving forward. And then Reese James from Chelsea. Uh, Reese James scored a magnificent goal the first game week. Um, he was looking pretty solid as far as uh, the defense. He's also relatively cheap compared to Aspilicueta or Marcos Alonso. So that could be a relatively easy way to get into the Chelsea back line. So that's a lot of players I threw at you guys. Um, I want to switch it up, though, to people that I would remove. So if you got someone, if any of these names, you got them on their team, I want you guys to be honest. Uh, Ducure. Especially if you have James Rodriguez. If you have Ducore, uh, I would get rid. And the only reason is because Ducore seems to be sitting back a bit more. Alan, uh, Alan's a great player for his role. He knows his role. He does his job. And James looks like he's going to be the most cre- creative one on the pitch. Um, Willian. Willian is another name that I would probably take off. Uh, he started getting his minutes managed, which is something you don't like to see for an FPL asset. You want them to get the full 90 minutes. If you get William, yes, he did fantastic the first game week, but to get only about like 60, I think it was like about like 60 minutes in the the second game week, something like that, when he got subbed off for Pepe, uh, or 70 actually, I believe, um, that kind of robs you of the chance of him getting something late in the game when when most teams get tired. 
Harrison from Leeds. Jack Harrison looked great against Liverpool. He got his goal, but I would switch him out for Click. Click on Leeds is the penalty taker. So if you got a Click, uh, you're pretty much set. He's a good asset to have because he's relatively cheap. Ben Davies and Doherty from Spurs. Spurs look really weak at the back. I don't think you need anyone that is going to give you clean sheet potential. And Ben Davies, especially with Regulon signing, that's going to be something that's very, it's going to be interesting to watch. Um, so those are the five names that I have right now for people to remove. What are, what are you guys' thoughts as far as going into game week three? So I want to check on each of the two teams, encouraging no. everyone else that listens to this. If you want to send us your team, we'll rate your team here on the show. We'll put out a, an early tweet, an early post in the beginning of the week so you can DM us your squads. And if you want to get featured, make sure that you send us those squads into, into the messages. So Eric started the last one, and Marco already started talking without caring. So Marco, mm-hmm. who do you got on your squad that you want to kind of drop that we could kind of do some surgery on? Well, I did a wall card, as I mentioned. And... I honestly got to have no idea who to drop. <laughs> I'm still debating. Actually, I did take one out right now. Um, I'm debating, and I, I want you input. I have 4.6. I took out Ailing from Leeds. Yes, yes. Ailing okay. From- so yeah. I, I, I have, so I have in a bank 4.6. Uh, in the def- in the defense side, who should I bring in? 4.6. So there are very few players that are cheaper than that. Um, we can look at. The Do you pricing need, right should, now. should I tell you who I have as my other four so you have an idea of where I'm at? Yeah. yeah that, okay, I have Alexander that'd Arnold. Good. Yeah, that'd be helpful. Actually, Mitchell from Crystal go. Palace. Um, Tierney, Webster, and Justin from uh, Leicester City. Justin's a good shout. Um, I think – so you have Alexander Arnold, Justin, and Mitchell already? Yes. I think maybe – I mean, you are in a wild card, and you might be set with those players. If you want to – so you have 4.6, though. You are in a wild card, so if you can try to get that 4.6 to a 5, um, you could probably get someone out of the Wolves team Okay. Uh, into your squad. You could probably also look at Everton – um, I think their assets might be a little bit more expensive. I'm looking at that right now while we're recording this. So the Everton back line, people that are five, you have Mike, you have Michael Keane, f- five million, very e- easily accessible. Uh, me not Yerry Mina is five point five, so I mean that might be out of reach. Um, but I think finding the extra point five to kind of get one of those two guys in, uh, Seamus Coleman as well. Seamus Coleman played. Two 90-minute matches. Uh, he got a clean sheet the first game. Right now they have Crystal Palace, Brighton, and then Liverpool with Southampton falling right after. I think those four matches are going to be pretty good for for clean sheets. The only trap that I would mention is Pickford. Pickford has not been looking well at all. And we saw that um, over the weekend, especially giving up goals. Uh, during this week too in their EFL Cup tie, he has like some bad, bad howlers. So I think even getting someone that might go forward a little bit more, probably like Coleman. Dinge is obviously the premium at 6.1. But if we look at defenders that are exclusively below 4.5, I think one of the kind of like really shadow players that are going under the radar might be uh, Ezri, Ezri Kansa from Aston Villa. Um, he, they do play Liverpool and they do play um, Leicester in their next three matches, but they have Fulham next. So if you want to get Ezri Kansa to kind of maximize on his return right now, like right away, that could be your guy. He's only 4.5. Um, he got his he got his goal um, last game week. As he looks like he's going to maintain his spot. You know, you have Webster already. Holding, I'm not sure if you want to double up on Arsenal because they have pretty bad fixtures in the next five. They play Liverpool, City, and United in the next five matches, including Leicester sandwiched in between. So I think maybe having another uh, Arsenal defender might not be it. So the names I'm going to give you right now, Kansa 
and looking at the 5 million bracket, you already have Justin, so you might want to go for Keen at 5 uh 5, 5 mil. And there's also someone that if they didn't have the fixtures, okay, but Gabriel, Saiz, and Reese James, they're all 5.1. So there's five names for you. Thank so you. you kind of uh, I would probably get some of those guys in. You might have to tinker in your midfield, but like you said, you're wildcarded. So that's the beautiful thing, something that you can uh, mess around with. Eric, who you got on your team that you're kind of having doubts about that you want to kick off? Well, the only player right now that I am trying to get rid of, but it's going to be hard now because he dropped, I believe, is Vinegar. Vinegar. So Vinegar was an early, an early, early fantasy shout by a lot of um, FPL managers. Vinegar was going to be uh, a very popular term is the kind of like a, the inexpensive way, the cheap option to get into a good defense. You know, Wolves' defense has been pretty solid. Rui Patricio yeah. is a solid goalkeeper as well on his day. But Vinegar hasn't been playing. So yeah. someone who's really riding your bench, um, he's cheap enough to keep, honestly. He really I think I'm going to for one more week. He's cheap enough to keep. Um, and I think that if you have – here's one thing that I'll, I'll kind of get ahead of myself. If you have the players to get you through the next game week, it's – especially vital to try not to take hits. Um, sometimes hits can pay off and that really is going to come up to your personal preference that I, I wouldn't, some managers try to do it. Some people in the podcasting, some fantasy podcasting world try to uh, tell you take hits, don't take hits. I'm more of an advocate for trusting your gut. If you think that taking the hit is going to get you more points by all means, but also it's very important to keep in mind the cons of that. So if you're <laughs> out for points, you kind of need the players to very much perform. You know, Vinegar did go down in value, so that might might affect you. It's not very important right now, so to speak. Um, so you could be easily. Uh, you quick question though. Are you are you playing imposter right now, trying to sabotage me, or? <laughs> 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 so we've been playing. We've been playing a lot of Among Us. Uh, I just, I just, you know, not to go off topic, but Among Us is such a great game. It is. Among it's Us is a great, great, great game. game. It's an awesome game. If you want to play, let us know. <laughs> yeah, if you want to play, <laughs> you see toxic we are. If you want to play Among Us with the uh, with the bench, let us know. We'll we'll get that set up. Uh, we'll see who can who can get the most kills. But no, I'm not playing sabotage. I would love to, uh, and it, it <laughs> especially looks kind of sus being in first place in the Benchwarmers League. I recognize that, but sus. for the benefit of making it even more competitive. Um, you know, I'm, I'm doing my best here to try to give you guys uh, some knowledge, some some tips. So I think the next thing that we can move into really quick are some burning questions that, that I got. And you guys tell me, I'll give you three and you guys can pick one. So the first one is uh, Werner Investment, question mark. The second one is Spend Less on Defenders, question mark. And the third one is United Assets, question mark. Which one do you guys want to tackle first? I'd say the Werner one, because I think everybody kind of gambled on him. Yeah. For the most part. All right, well, we'll go with Werner. So the stats with Werner, um, we were actually talking about this a little bit before recording. One of the most glaring stats, Bomb, is that Werner had – Probably, I, I, if I remember correctly, the third lowest XG for the game week. So his expected goals were rock bottom. And that's very alarming for someone uh, who you spent money on, especially 9.5, who's a premium. But the thing is that uh, he did get the penalty in the first game week. The second one, he struggled a little bit. It's, you know, it's never the greatest when you play a strong side like Liverpool. But one of the things that I will say is it's only been two game weeks. So it's a very small sample size to pull from. If you have Werner, I think the general consensus right now is just hold. Uh, like Sun taught a lot of, a lot of managers, I think over 140,000 of them that ship them out. Patience really does pay off. And I think patience this season is going to be key because a lot of players can may be able to turn it around. Like I mentioned before, it's definitely going to be the season of the penalty. Um, 
It doesn't look like maybe Werner is going to be taking them because Jorginho stepped up to, to take it, even though he missed. So they might put someone else on there. They might put Havertz on him. Uh, Havertz might be taking those pens. So Chelsea do play West Brom, Southampton, and Crystal Palace. So there is one plus for keeping Werner. One con is I really believe that Werner is not going to hit the ground until Pulisic and Ziyech come onto the field. I think once Pulisic and Ziyech um, get put into that Chelsea squad, he's going to do a lot better because they're just much faster. The way he played at, at Red Bulls, um, at Red Bull Leipzig, he just had fast wingers around him. He had, he had players that could move the ball. And putting him in behind, I think that's something that Pulisic could definitely do. Ziyech is definitely known for putting in those threaded through balls. I would hold. I would hold on Werner at least one more week. Give him a week. Uh, West Brom have conceded the most chances to strikers. I believe it was 15 um, in the last two game weeks. So strikers have been kind of uh, having a field day against West Brom. So I would hold against him. Uh, Marco, you get to choose between either spending less on defense or the United assets. Which one do you want? Mm. They're both bad options. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> the United assets, because I have no United players in my game, my team. United assets. So that's something that's starting to worry people a little bit. Uh, a lot of fantasy managers are saying, well, last season, United assets were a must have. Everyone had to have Bruno. Some people even tripled up with Bruno, Martial, Rashford, maybe even Greenwood in the mix to kind of enable their front lines. What are we supposed to do about United Assets? So I think um, as a fan, it was definitely an awful start. And I believe that having players like Wambi Saka and Greenwood are going to help them fantasy-wise at least. So Solskjaer starting 11 is someone – they're players that I guess they can perform – and then they might leave people in the dust. Like we saw Bruno was getting double digit figures for the better part of last season. At the end, uh, Martial scoring goals. Rashford was a little bit late to the party. Greenwood for everyone that had Greenwood from the beginning when he was super cheap, they were getting easy points. So I think the same, I would say the same thing. At least personally, I would say if you have them, a lot of people brought them in for game week two um, or had them already from the beginning and just sat them on the bench. Um, just have them just be patient for, for another week. I think bringing in a player, it's always best to give them three game weeks to return for you. If they haven't after that time, then you've already built up hopefully enough free transfers to get them out, ship them out. So they play Brighton next. Uh, they could probably do pretty well against Brighton uh, as they did at the end of last season. Uh, I believe they won that fixture three, one, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Bruno had a great goal during that game so the assets again bruno martial rashford even greenwood right now in the midfield if you have any of those if you want to pick any of those um it could go one of two ways so the united asset if you own keep them keep them for a week united asset if you don't you're in an actual interesting position where you can watch them for one more week if they mess up two weeks in a row then you know there's plenty of other options. One of the things in fantasy this season that I think is going to make it very hard and competitive is there are a lot of good players this season in the league, a lot of people that you can pull from. So the last thing that I want to bring up is spending less on defenders. Um, so what I said just a few seconds ago about there being a lot of options, you a lot of people want to go all out attack. And sometimes what they do is that they skimp out on their defenders, get a lot of 4 million, 4.5 million defenders, and say, well, they're not going to score very much. The clean sheets aren't coming in, so I'll just put three defenders, go full out attack, five midfielders, two forwards. Uh, and you might get the rewards for that, honestly, in the beginning. But w what we always see with fantasy and what we always see with the Premier League is once teams get settled in, those goals are going to dry up. Uh, one of the interesting stats is that there were no ties, there were no draws uh, during the game week. Everybody scored. There were very few clean sheets. I think there was only five of them in the last two game weeks. So what I would look at is if you have cheap defenders and you're going that route, that's perfectly fine. But in the next two or three game weeks, start looking at someone who's a bit more expensive, a bit stronger. Uh, players like Digne, players like uh, maybe even Trent or Robertson, if you haven't doubled up on them. Those are always assets that are going to return for you. So spending less on defense right now is pretty good. 
and uh, moving forward, that might bite you. So the last thing to wrap up this segment, and thanks guys for joining in with us and listening to some of these fantasy tips. Eric, who do you have for your Game Week 3 captaincy? Can you share us or divulge that information with uh, with the listeners? Who are you so, going to give the armband for Game Week 3? So I haven't chose that yet because I'm, I'm, I'm tomorrow I'm going to make my final decisions on my team because I'm, I'm, I'm just very, very nervous right now for this Game Week, to be honest with you. But with that being said, I think the safe bet is going to be KDB for me. KDB safe bet. Marco, what do you think? As of right now, I have it on KDB, but they are playing against Leicester City. So, I don't know if I'm going to keep up there or not. Uh, I'm still debating. Yeah. Leicester, Leicester have been looking kind of weak without Johnny Evans in the back. They've been looking very shaky. Uh, so, Yunshu, I think it was, who was the other defender? Um, I'm going to look it up right now just so I don't get it wrong. So, they, there was a moment where they were playing and they just looked, they looked all over the place. They looked awful. Uh, I'm going to bring it up right now. Lester. Justin? Yeah. Yeah. Or Castagne? No, no, no. Uh, Justin. Um, so, Yunshu and Ndidi. So, Ndidi is Indeed. traditionally a yeah, center yeah. defensive mid. And him playing in the back, I think, is something that maybe Brendan is doing in the temporary because he doesn't have uh, Johnny Evans right now. Um, I think that's going to hurt them a little bit as far as keeping the clean sheets. Ju- uh, Justin and Castagna have both scored. They both had a return. So that's going to be something that th- those fullbacks, those those wingbacks, those fullbacks, they're always going to go forward. They'll get in the cross. They'll get in the assist. So I would say KDB against uh, a shaky Leicester defense is pretty tasty. For the people that have Werner, um, if you want to consider Werner, if you don't have KDB, I think Werner is also a good shout to kind of split the captain's team. Uh, I guess once West Brom, like I said, uh, the strikers are doing pretty well against West Brom. And I think putting it on Werner, if you want to say, uh, give yourself of an ultimatum and say, Werner, if you don't perform and give me the, the captain points, you're out. That could be a helpful way to help you make your decision. Uh, the other two, I guess, old reliables is either between Kane and Son or Mane and Salah. If you have either of those players, you know, Kane and Son right now are in form. I think those are good shouts if you don't have any of the aforementioned ones. And then Mane and Salah, they're just the old reliables. Salah has a good record against Arsenal. Um, especially in the scoring department. Uh, he has a tendency to put in a goal against them at least. But if you feel like another player might do well, I think all three of us can agree right now, KDB is going to be probably the most popular captaincy pick. Uh, people are looking at how he's how he's uh, performing. So one of the last things to kind of wrap up this, this first episode, the strategies. There are some volatile price movements uh, going on in the market right now. One very important resource that I would recommend to anyone listening to this, if you guys take the time to get to this point, is the FPL Reddit. So the Fantasy Reddit, the subreddit, uh, they have a treasure trove of information there. Yes, there's a bunch of people shouting, rate my teams and asking questions and getting downvoted, what, what have you. But one of the most important resources on that Reddit, on that subreddit, sorry, is the price change bot. So the price change bot posts the increases and the drops, the rises and the drops, the players that are happening right now, it looks to be every day. We're in Easter standard time recording this. So around 930 Eastern standard time, the changes have been going up. Um, There are some websites that you can check such as FPL statistics. If you Google FPL statistics, that's a website that gives you a rough idea on what the price movements are going to be. Um, very quickly, any player over a hundred is projected to rise. Any player under a hundred, uh, in the target column is projected to drop. So that's a, that's a pretty handy tool to have, uh, kind of in, uh, in your bookmarks or in your saved in your favorites to kind of check if you're trying to sit on someone, um, and decide if you want to bring them in. One of the things that helped me a lot last season, I ended with 106 point. I think 106.4 in team value. And that was, I got an extra 6 million from team value from rises. 
if you're sitting on the fence on a player, whether to bring him in or not, sometimes just looking at the price rises and seeing that he's going to go up, that might convince you. That might be what t- takes you off the, off the bench, off the fence. And you're like, all right, he's going to go up. I'll put him in my team. If anything, you'll get the team value that you can use later on in the season. So that's one of the tips that I'll put down for as far as transfer strategies. Uh, you want to watch out for those that are happening every day, roughly around like 930 Eastern. And um, anyone who's dropping, obviously, you want to get rid of. And anyone who rises, you want to try to bring them in. But obviously, don't prioritize. Make your own plans. Trust your teams. Trust your guts. Uh, to look at right now where we are in the Benchwarmers Fantasy. <sighs> right now, I am leading with 161. I've had two pretty good gimmicks. But there are some, some people that are following. Um, we have Alcan United in second. And Livar Pool. Uh, tied for second. They both have 149. Uh, Eric, our boy Eric with Tierney Your Ass Up. He's in uh, sixth place. And our boy Marco. Don't even. Don't even. Don't even. We do have to. We don't. do. Let's just don't. say we have to scroll a little bit to get. To, we, just have, we just have to scroll a bit. Don't. Are we, we already discussed that I'm, in the, I'm, I'm getting the toilet this year. So you don't have to tell him where I'm at. You need the iPhone 20. So it has such a big monitor <laughs> screen. You, to, you can see all the way down without scrolling. <laughs> Uh, that's it. That's it for tonight, guys. Um, we'll see you next week. Let us know what your captaincy options are. We'll put it up on a post uh, promoting the episode tomorrow, Friday. Um, make sure that you meet the deadlines. The deadlines are now 90 minutes before kickoff. That's something new from last season. It used to be an hour. So the deadlines to submit your teams are 90 minutes before kickoff. So I think the early match this weekend is 7.30. You'll want to have your team confirmed and your captain picked and all of that by 6, 6 a.m. Eastern. Uh, I'm Diego. I'm joined tonight by Eric and Marco. Thanks, guys, for sharing your teams. This is a new fantasy journey that we're kind of uh, expanding on. We'll be doing this short little episode weekly. And like we said, we want to hear from you. Give us your teams. Send us in your questions. Uh, send us a DM, and we'll make sure that, you, that you're featured on the next episode. Catch you on the next one. Peace. Peace.